Hello and welcome to this video on Cisco Wireless. This video is for you if you want to configure an LDAP server on your controller, especially in Windows Active Directory, uh, on Converge Access or the Unified Controller, and you're not too sure about all these fields that you have in the LDAP configuration section on the controller. So first of all, you have a choice between Authenticated and Anonymous. If you are using Windows, you will have to use Authenticated. The difference between the two is that Anonymous allows the controller to query the LDAP server without specifying any user information for that query. Whereas Authenticated uses what we call a bind request, that is to say the controller is going to send a username and password pair that is going to be authenticated and validated by Active Directory before allowing the controller to make further inquiries about other users. So by default, Windows does not accept Anonymous queries and you want to use the Authenticated mode. But then you have to specify all these fields, user base DN, attribute, bind username, and password. To help you, there is a great tool that is available on every Windows machine, which is LDP. You can access it on your Windows Server or any Windows 7, for example, by typing start and then LDP. This is an LDAP browsing tool that you can use with your Windows Server. So the first thing you do is to go connect and you enter the IP address of your Windows Server. In my case, it's a Windows 2008. You can just input the IP address and keep the port as default. This is going to give you first important information, which is the domain in which you are working. LDP also allows you to have a tree view of your server. So if you go tree and you input the domain information, you would like to see the topology of your Active Directory tree. Of course, because Windows does not accept anonymous authentication, you need to first authenticate as a user. Otherwise, you see there is nothing that can be seen. So the same issue is going to be found if you try to configure your controller with anonymous connection. So your next step is to go here and say bind. Then you will enter a valid username and password for your server domain and by the way, it does not need to be administrator, it could be just a valid user. And this will allow the LDP tool, just like the controller, to be authenticated by the Active Directory tree, so that you can expand the view and see the entire topology. If you've gone that far, the rest is pretty simple. You see here the topology of your Active Directory, and this is the information you're going to use when configuring your controller. So let's take an example. In my Windows Server, example.com, I opened the Active Directory Users and Computer, and I'm going to create a new organizational unit that will be the source for me to all the users I will be checking from my controller. So I name it, for example, a DAP. And here I create a new user. as this organizational unit is going to be the place where I'll be putting all my users and it could be several levels below, I'm going to refresh my tree view from LDP so that I can see how this organizational unit is called. And you can see that it is called ldapexample.com. So here I have the name of my container for my users that will be checked from my controller. So I can just copy this field and then going to my controller I'm going to say that the base DN for my users is going to be that container. Be careful, the organizational units you create are called OUs of course, but if you want to use the default user container, this one is going to be CN, not OU. So make sure to always copy exactly what the name of the container is when configuring your controller. Next, the user attributes. If you use Windows and you want to check the username and password, what you're going to verify always is what we call the SAM account name. SAM stands for Security Account Manager. So this is how it's spelled. Be careful, it's case sensitive. So it's lowercase s, a, m, a, capital A, m, a, count, and then n is a capital as well. And if you check username and passwords, the object type is going to be a person. So that is the root area where you're going to check for your users. The only other item you need is the username that you're going to bind to make this verification. In my case, I was showing you a connection using administrator, but it doesn't need to be administrator. As a matter of fact, here I'm going to configure something else. 
If it is a user which is already in the organization unit that you configured, for example, my Cisco 11 here, because it is straight inside the organization unit that is saying the same container as my base DN, which is my base path, I can just type what is missing, that is to say CN equals Cisco 11, like this. As a matter of fact, because it's in the same container, I do not need to put the CN value, I could just say Cisco 11. On the other hand, if your user is not in the same path as your base DN, that is to say it's not below that path in a subcontainer, but it's above or in parallel, which is the case for me if I want to use, for example, users, the user container, that is not below the OU LDAP, so I need to put the full path. So for example, if I expand this one and I want to use that guy as being my bind user, well, you need to copy the entire name and path of that user into your controller bind username. So that is going to allow your controller to restart from the root, come, go down example, go down users, and check if usual exists. And of course you have here to put that user password. And again, you see this guy is not an admin, it is just a valid user in my topology. And that allows that user to view the Active Directory topology. So in my case, it's a normal user. But be careful, if you create specific users with lower rights than normal users, that user may not have the right to view the entire Active Directory topology. But if it's a normal user, it should be allowed. A nice way to check is to use LDP, disconnect, and reconnect using this bound user, and verify if you still see the topology. Once you have all these elements, you just need the IP address of your server, of course. And voila, your LDAP server is configured. If you want more details about these TLS and timeouts, please check the other videos we have on how you configure these parameters on the various controller types. I hope this was useful for you, and I'd like to thank you for watching.